Hello and welcome to another video. Today we'll be taking a deeper look into the instrumentation amplifier and deriving it. We will figure out the voltage output by the end of this. So let's take a closer look at the circuit and we will realize we have two parts to it. The first part, the differential amplifier, is at the end here. And the second part, is the buffer circuit at the front. We can take a look and split the circuit to derive each one separately since they both are much easier to tackle. First, let's start with a differential amplifier. It is an op-amp circuit with resistors on both the negative and positive terminals. We will call those two, we will also call the two input voltages VA and VB, which we will derive later. We will assume they are known for now. Looking closely, if you have seen any up amp amplifier, you will notice the top part looks like a non-inverting amplifier. We have covered that amplifier in a previous video, so let's start with that. We will call the positive terminal voltage node VC here. In doing so, will will let us start our node voltage equations. So, we will start with doing the node voltage, so we have Vc minus Va over R3 plus Vc minus Vl over R5 should equal to zero. We will go ahead and we will try to solve Vl, so we'll put Vl on the other side. By adding it, we have Vc over Va over R3 plus Vc over R5 is equal to Vl over R5. Multiplying by R5, we Notice that we have now Vc plus R5 over R3 times the quantity of Vc minus Va. And we could uh, separate it by v Vc. So we have Vout is equal to Vc times the quantity of 1 plus R R5 over R3 minus R5 over R3 times Va. So now we just need to find Vc. Remember. The positive and negative terminal voltages of the op amps are equal, so Vc is really the voltage here. And now we come to this other part of the circuit. Looking closely at this part of the circuit, just goes to show us a simple and sneaky circuit, a voltage divider. Taking away the op amp and zooming into the lower part of the op amp, we are really just taking a look at this. And so our equation turns out to be Vc is equal to R6 divided by R6 plus R4 times Vb. Now we can plug this into our previous equation. Plugging in the voltage divider gives us that top equation. Vl is equal to R6 over R6 plus R4 times the quantity of 1 plus R5 over R3 times Vb minus R5 over R3 times Va. Now this equation is a bit big and I will sidetrack for a second here. If we multiply by 1 in a unique way, R4 divided by R4, and then we invert the fraction and simplify the denominator to make it look like this, uh, 1 over 1 plus R6 over R4, and then we'll place that fraction all under the parentheses part of the equation, we can see something familiar. In fact, if the ratios are equal, R6 over R4 is equal to R5 over R3, then we form a big simplification. That get all that all that gets crossed out, and we have Vl is equal to R6 over R4 times Vb minus R5 over R3 times Va. So we went from that big equation to this, Vl is equal to R6 over R4 times Vb minus R5 over R3 times Va. But since we made the ratios R6 over R4 and R5 over R3 to be equal, we can change this further to be uh, this nice simple equation. Vl is equal to R5 over R3 times the quantity of Vb minus Va. So this whole differential amplifier reduces to just this with the appropriate resistors. Now let's move on and talk about the first part of the circuit. We need two outputs, VA and VB. To get those, we'll use a superposition concept. 
which tells us that our output is the sum of the results of having just one source at a time. So we'll start with v1 as our source and v2 as our second source. Remember, for voltage sources, they become ground if we're not using them. So let's start with the first part. A quick side note is that since the second input became ground, we can also say that the node between R2 and RG should also be ground thanks to our op amp on the bottom there. Knowing that makes the top part look very familiar. It is exactly a non-inverting op amp, so we can just write that final equation for this. V a1 is equal to 1 plus R1 divided by RG all times V1. We have already found VA. All we need to do is find out what VB is. The easiest way to do this is by looking at the current going right through that ground node. We know that there, there is a current coming through RG and this should equal the current going through R2 because of Kirchhoff's current law. No current goes through the that feedback loop because of the op amp. So using Ohm's laws, we have negative VB1 over R2 is equal to V1 over RG. We will have to solve for VB. So we get VB1 is equal to negative R2 over RG times V1. Remember, V out is equal to R5 over R3 times the quantity of VB minus VA is what we were trying to find for the whole circuit. So we could plug this in now, and our V out should be R5 divided by R3 times the quantity of negative R2 divided by RG times V1 minus the quantity of 1 plus R1 over RG all divided by V1. Simplifying by bringing out what V1 is and by getting rid of those extra parentheses inside, we get that our first Output is equal to negative V1 times, times R5 over R3 times the quantity of 1 plus R1 over RG plus R2 over RG. The first part's done. Let's do the superposition for the second part. But we can notice something right away. This circuit is symmetrical about this line. And so we would rather have very similar equations and derivations. First, we will notice again that this is a non inverting amplifier, so our equation becomes VB is equal to the quantity of 1 plus R2 over RG, all times V2. And that's it for the first part. Now we have to solve for VA, we get there, we found VB. Finding VA should be similar to before, we will use the currents. We know that the current going through RG should be pretty similar to the current going through R1. And so the equation is, using Ohm's law again, negative VA1 divided by R1 is equal to V2 divided by RG. Solving for VA, we get VA is equal to negative R1 over RG times V2. Again, we will remember that our output equation was v R5 over R3 times the quantity of VB minus VA. So we'll plug in the answers we just found to get up. V out is equal to R5 over R3 times the quantity of 1 plus R2 over R th RG times all times V2 plus R1 over RG times V2. We will simplify this again by taking out the V2 and taking away those extra parentheses and we should have our second output voltage is equal to V2 times R5 over R3 times the quantity of 1 plus R1 over RG plus R2 over RG. We found both source voltages together, so now we could put it together using superposition. Plugging them in, we get that V out is equal to V2 times R5 over R3 times the quantity of 1 plus R1 over RG plus R2 over RG minus V1 times R5 over R3 plus the quantity of 1 plus R1 over RG plus R2 over RG. There's lots of repeating parts here. We can actually take out those repeating parts by factoring. So we get R5 over R3 out times 1 plus 
R1 over RG plus R2 over RG. And we notice that we just have uh, that it's all being multiplied by V2 minus V1. And there you have it. We have an, our output. Now, we can simplify this a bit further. If we get R1 to equal to R2, then our output simplifies here to be V out is equal to R5 over R3 times the quantity of 1 plus 2 times R2 over RG times the quantity of V2 minus V1. And there you have it, our nice and final output. A few more remarks on this. We have finally completely derived the, this circuit. Our final output is here. If we have good resistors that are pretty equal to one another. And here it is if we did it. V out is equal to, well, all of that. Now, ideally, we'll use a top equation for most cases because it allows us just to change the resistor of RG to change the amplification of this amplifier in one swoop. And that's pretty big. We don't want to be changing the other resistors because we made generalizations that they are equal to other resistors or had similar ratios. So if we change one of those, we're changing two, maybe four resistors at a time. It's a lot easier to probably have either one resistor to replace or a variable resistor at RG. And that will be big for any um, amplification that we want to might modify just a bit. And there you have it. Now, we went and derived all this to talk about one thing. This amplifier can be help us obtain one very neat signal from our bodies. And that is the signal we get from an EKG that is helpful to find us the P, Q, R, S, T waves, which are the electric si signals from your heart. So this is what we are aspiring to do. All right. And that will come in in the future videos. Stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. That's pretty much it for this video. We have fully derived the instrumentation amplifier. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.